Mass of Scranton, many of our parishes pray a decade of the rosary before weekend masses for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We are happy to join in those prayers, and we ask you to be aware of this great need in the church for young people to seriously consider this vocation of service. <clears throat>
internal correction, approaching someone who has done you wrong, for many of us is one of the more difficult things that we deal with in this life. Jesus addresses that issue in the gospel. Let's get ready to deal with that by asking God to forgive our sins. To our mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory be to God, and on earth peace be the Lord of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look kindly upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in your Son may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Summed up in this saying, 
namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, My first job as a Navy chaplain was at the Marine Corps Combat Command in Quantico, Virginia. This base is a training command for officers. Almost every officer in the Marine Corps at one time or another goes through that school. Part of my job there at that time was to be the chaplain to the battalion of the bad guys. These were the Marines that pretended to be the enemy when the officers in training would be out in the field. So one day, and remember, this was my first job as a Navy chaplain, very green, didn't know much about military etiquette. Anyways, one day a young private comes in and tells me this big sob story about how he needed a, a three-day pass to go home and deal with a big crisis. And, Chaplain, would you go to the commanding officer and ask him to give me this pass? It seemed pretty logical to me. I mean, chaplains are supposed to help out their Marines, all that. So I went and saw the commanding officer, explained the situation to him. And the, the lieutenant colonel looked at me and he smiled a little bit. He said, Chaplain, all right with me. Let's give that young Marine a pass. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I mean, I did a nice thing for a kid and needed to go home, see his folks, whatever it was. So the next day, there's a little note on my desk. First sergeant of the company. The first sergeant is the senior enlisted person of the company of Marines. Asked me to come on down, see him. Well, I learned a few new words. As it turns out, this young Marine, this young private, had gotten himself in trouble in a variety of ways. And, of course, didn't tell me that. But um, the first sergeant was quick to inform me that he would never have gotten a three-day pass had the Marine worked the system the way it was supposed to work. So, what did I learn? Whenever there's a problem with a Marine or a sailor, you always go to the lowest level and start there. I should have gone to a squad leader who was in charge of three or four Marines, or maybe his sergeant, or maybe the first sergeant, or whoever is in, else was in that chain of command. But no, I went to the commanding officer. The big boss. 
I lost a lot of street credibility, as you might imagine, with the rest of the Marines because of that little act. But I gained good piece of wisdom. Now, here's the question. Did the Marines learn about solving problems at the lowest level from Jesus? Or did Jesus learn about solving problems at the lowest level from the Roman soldiers who occupied his land? Because that is precisely what Jesus preaches in our gospel today. In fact, for starters, fraternal correction, being able to go up to somebody who hurts you for some reason, and talking it out is definitely part of biblical teaching, all the way back to Ezekiel in that first reading we heard today. But let's face it, confronting someone who has done something wrong is just not easy. It's a lot easier to talk to anybody else when somebody hurts us, including, are you ready, the internet, than it is to go to the person who has caused the problem and talk it out. In fact, we get a number of calls here in the parish of people complaining about others, asking us to do something about it. You know what we do? We say, why don't you go talk to that person and see if you can work it out? Because 99% of the time, they haven't. I know it's not easy. But isn't it true that when you build up the courage to actually go and talk to somebody who has done something wrong, and you know it's wrong, when you go and actually confront the person in a Christian, non-threatening kind of way, it often works out. You often, not only does it work out, but oftentimes you end up being friends or deep in the relationship you have with that person. Okay, suppose that doesn't work. Well, then you take it to the next level. And if that person has harmed you, the odds are that person has harmed others in the very same way. And you find out who those people are. And as a group, small group, go, that's right out of the gospel. Well, suppose that doesn't work. Well, Jesus says, then tell the church. And that doesn't necessarily mean me, but it could mean anyone within the church who you trust, who you can bring to bear on the person to help that person understand that he or she has a significant problem. And if that doesn't work, Jesus, Jesus says, well, treat that person like a tax collector. Man, it's pretty harsh. We all know tax collectors were not the most lovable people. And yet, what did Jesus do with tax collectors? He ate with them. He hanged out with them. He was close to them. And maybe during that time period had the chance to help the tax collector come along a little bit. Never give up. You keep reaching out even to those who have hurt us. Finally, let's say even that doesn't work. Well, you go to the end of the little gospel passage and you see that Jesus says this. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. You know what you do? Put them into God's hands and you pray. Because at that point, they become God's problem. We stand as Professor Faith. I believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
as in joyful celebration, we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord our God of hosts, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
a spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Will you please be seated? Before our final prayer, this evening, this is a special moment for our parish as I'm honored to present to members of our religious education family awards for their tremendous commitment in teaching our children the Catholic faith. We have four members of our parish who have taught for 5, 10, or 15 years. And of course, remember, you don't get paid to be a catechist. These people serve our parish and teach our kids out of the love they have for their church and for these kids. So when I call the names of these catechists, I would ask you to stand to be uh, recognized. We have a pin and, of course, a certificate from the bishop to award to you after the Mass. The St. John Newman Award for serving five years as a catechist is awarded to the husband of Marie McDonald. Marie passed away just a couple months ago, and her husband Tom is here to accept that award. Tom, would you please stand? Exit door. 
door will be open back there so that you can leave the church through that exit. Also, please remember to leave, leave your kneelers in the down position so that our church sanitizers know exactly where to clean. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.